Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Circles webinar. We're excited to tell you more about this NHLBI-funded project to support COPD care in the rural United States. Um, and as you can see here, the CIRCLES acronym stands for Clinicians Improving the Rural COPD Landscape Through Education in Self-Care. And you're going to learn more about the project as we spend the next 30 minutes together. But because the acronym is hard to remember, we're going to use CIRCLES as we go through. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, my name is Kristen Willard, and I oversee the educational uh, programs for the COPD Foundation. I'm joined on the phone today by Stephanie Williams there on the right. She is one of the foundation's esteemed respiratory therapists, and she uh, was one of the leads on this project. We would also upfront like to thank Dr. Barbara Yawn and Brett Denning for their important work in making this project happen. Let's go to the next slide. So a little bit of background. Let's talk for a second or two about why we wanted to do this work, uh, about why it was so important to do this work. As you can see on this slide, more than 3.5 million Americans living in rural areas, so outside of cities or suburban areas of the US, have COPD, right? And up to a million more may have the disease and we may not know it. That's a really striking number. It's also important, look at that second bullet. Rates of COPD are higher in rural areas. Look at that 8.2%, nearly double that compared to urban areas. So that's a really striking difference there. This is changing the lives of many people who live in rural America and their families. We know, look in the box below that, that blue box, we know that residents who live in the rural United States also face additional health challenges. So the, we've included a few of these here. The first two go together. So there are fewer specialists we know for people living in the rural US, um, fewer specialists for them to see. Uh, and people who live in rural areas sometimes live very far from their nearest primary care doctor or and even farther maybe from a specialist like a pulmonologist or lung doctor. We jump down to that third bullet, socioeconomic disparity. So if you're not familiar with that term, it's really just a fancy way uh, of saying that resources are not equal when you uh, compare people living in rural America to those living in or closer to the city. And envir environmental concerns, what do we mean here by that? Sometimes these can be related to workplace concerns, so maybe pollution or chemicals being used in the workplace can also be related to the outside air that we breathe, breathe or even in our homes, so such as using wood burning stoves. And a surprising fact here on the right, I mean, this is really astonishing when you think about it. That's three and a half million Americans that I, that, that I mentioned before that we know have COPD in, rural, uh, in the rural US. That's equivalent to the populations, think of that, of Chicago, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, excuse me, and San Francisco, California combined. So those two huge cities that you think about or might know and have visited, um, that those populations together equal that 3.5 million Americans. It's really astonishing. Let's go to the, the, the next slide. So now we have an idea of the, the impact that COPD has in rural areas. Let's talk more about this project and what we uh, aim to do. What we wanted to do was to try to address some of the issues that people with COPD and their families face, so those gaps. Um, one of them was uh, patient-provider uh, communication. We know this can be very difficult from all sides. We also know that this is essential for the success of patients with COPD to uh, managing their care and to their health outcomes. COPD self-management was another primary gap that we were looking at here. So what do we mean by that? Well, it's really people with COPD taking care of their condition and any other conditions that they have day to day when they're at home. 
so how did we learn more about these things? Well, we learned more by doing surveys and focus groups. So, so surveys were just online questionnaires that we sent to our community. And focus groups are when we get together smaller groups of people to have a conversation with us about particular things. So in, in this case, we did those um, via webinar much like this but much smaller groups. So, so um, well, you'll hear more about the numbers in a second. And the people we spoke to were people with COPD and clinicians, meaning uh, healthcare providers. As part of the project, we also created a toolkit for people with COPD to help them in their self-management. And you will uh, learn more about that from Stephanie. And then ultimately, we recruited volunteers to test the toolkit and to provide their feedback. So let's go to the next slide. So the surveys or the questionnaires that we conducted, here are the numbers. 116 people with COPD responded. So that was a, a nice number for us to get a, a good feeling for uh, the experiences and views of some people with COPD. And 50 healthcare professionals completed the surveys. And that was from a variety of backgrounds. So they might have been respiratory therapists, they might have been nurses, they might have been physicians. We also held two focus groups, one with people with COPD and one with healthcare professionals. And those people that did the focus groups came from the people, the larger group that did the surveys. The healthcare professional group included specifically a respiratory care supervisor. We had two respiratory therapists, one nurse, and one nurse practitioner. So that uh, diversity that you see there was important to us because we wanted all these different viewpoints to be represented and hear everyone's feedback. Let's go to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit about the findings from those surveys and those focus groups, those two focus groups. So you'll see here, it says many social determinants of health created barriers to accessing care and using self-management tools. Well, that's a lot of um, complicated language. So um, it, it, sometimes it's a, a new concept, the social determinants of health. So what are we talking about there? Well, we're referring to the things that are in your environment that can affect things like your health, that can affect um, your quality of life. Uh, in this case, we heard from um, people with COPD that the things you see here impacted their ability to have better health, um, to care for themselves at home. So um, low income and poverty having a clear effect, uh, low educational attainment, which really translates to a more minimal or a, a lower level of education. Uh, making things more complicated or more difficult, and inadequate infrastructure. So it, what does this one mean? Think about things like, in this specific case, access to Wi-Fi that works reliably, right? So that you can access uh, portals like many health systems have now. So you can exchange emails with your uh, healthcare providers who use that. In general, infrastructure could also include things like access to public transportation, which we know is really important, uh, access to a consistent power supply. So those are the kinds of things that would be included here. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so when we ask people about the app specifically, now this is the PCG app that was part of the project, right? And the app is called the Pocket Consultant Guide app. And what does that mean? Well, there are two sections to this app. One is for healthcare professionals to help them to deliver good care to patients with COPD, to really support the work that's being done with patients with COPD. And the other side is for patients and for caregivers. So people with COPD and their family members. And the idea behind the app is we want to give you an electronic place to say, track your activity or track how you're feeling and how your symptoms might be changing over time. We also wanted a place that you could access inhaler videos and nebulizer videos, exercise videos, things along those lines. So this app 
um, is where we keep a lot of that information for people who are interested in using it electronically. So perceptions of the Pocket Consultant Guide app are what I'm going to share with you next. So people with COPD, um, that, that group of people really told us that they didn't think that they were likely to use this on a daily basis, right? So this might not be something that they would uh, be relying on for everyday care. And that's really important for us to learn whenever we're creating um, a project like this or, or carrying it out. Another one. We learned very quickly that people said to us, you know, I don't always carry my phone with me, um, which is something really important for us to learn, right? So we learned um, pretty early that we couldn't just rely on the phone component of this or on the app alone. And we also learned that people really wanted a low tech option, right? So we we laugh at ourselves for being sort of old school in, li in liking low tech, which you think of as being paper-based or using a pen and paper, um, booklets, those types of things. But people said to us that um, they also would like, in addition to the app, something that they could switch to if they decided to, something that was not electronic like this. We heard from healthcare providers that they really weren't sure whether the patients that they saw with COPD were going to use an app. We're almost there. There we go. And secondly, very, very sorry about that. It, that was okay. a house glitch. <laughs> and it's just to keep everybody on their toes, right? Um, and then secondly, that um, they thought that there could be a possibility, this was positive, using many of the features of the app in the face-to-face -face sessions. So what do we mean by that? HCPs or healthcare professionals were saying, you know, while I'm not sure that my patients with COPD will use this on a regular basis, when they're not with me, I think that we can use many features of this when we see each other face to face. And so we knew that that was something that we wanted to incorporate into the work that we were doing. We want to just tell you here, and you'll hear a little bit more about this, but based upon what we heard, we're also developing a low tech option for people who have uh, no access to smartphones. So stay tuned on that as that's something in addition to what you, you will see here, we are also developing in the next phase of this project. So let's go on to this next slide. So another question that we asked people, um, and again, this was people with COPD as well as healthcare professionals, was what would help with COPD self-management? In the case of people with COPD, what would help you? And in the case of healthcare professionals, what would help you to help your patients, basically? And so we've got some great feedback here. We heard from people with COPD that they wanted advice on avoiding flare-ups. Tell me how to avoid, how to manage my exacerbations or flare-ups and how to stay out of the hospital. I'd really like a way we heard to track my symptoms, um, a way to document these um, in a manner that I could share with my healthcare team, with my doctor, that was extremely important to them. People wanted how-to videos, so uh, things like how do I use my inhaler, or how do I use my nebulizer, or how do I do exercises that would be safe for someone like me. And another thing we wanted to bring up here was that people were asking for a, an action plan. So if this is something that's new to you, we are happy to talk about this at the foundation because this is something that we are big fans of. Um, a, an action plan, or the, specifically the My COPD Action Plan, is a plan you can download on the foundation's website. So you can find this under our downloads library on the website, and you can download it for free. And what you do is you work with your doctor to document what actions you should take when your everyday COPD symptoms change, right? So um, what should I do if I'm experiencing a change in my sputum or a change in my cough, right? When do I call 911 if I feel um, a change in symptoms? So what is the threshold at which point I would do that? So these are things that you would talk about ahead of time and then document, right? Having this in your hands, this sort of roadmap, really I think can help people to feel better, uh, more informed, uh, more empowered, 
because they or you have a, a plan that you've all agree, agreed on. You know what will happen next and how to handle that. And then also the findings from healthcare professionals. So what would help with COPD self-management for your patients? One of the things we heard was a patient appropriate explanation of a disease process. So you'll see that's really specific, a patient appropriate explanation of the disease process. The, the idea is to have something that people with COPD who are generally lay people, right, who are, are not um, medical professionals themselves, uh, most often can understand that it makes it accessible to those of us who don't have a clinical background. And information on what patients can expect was another thing. So what is in uh, their treatment plans, et cetera, sort of what are what might next steps be and what uh, people with COPD can ex expect. You'll see these two overlap. So action plans, customizable action plans, and then the videos on device management overlap with what the people with COPD told us. You see above those how-to videos, how do they use nebulizers, how do they store them, um, same with inhalers, and then customizable action plans, same as um, the, the people with COPD had indicated. And this last one is extremely important, um, advice on quitting smoking. So that was something healthcare professionals really uh, were keen on their patients with COPD having information on or tools that could support their quitting smoking. Um, is, interestingly, this was actually last on the list uh, or the lowest choice from people we spoke to who had COPD. And that's um, an interesting difference for us to see, right? That there were things that people with COPD that were much more important for them in um, their self-management as, uh, as compared to where healthcare professionals had placed smoking or quitting smoking. So I think the exciting part sort of comes now because Stephanie, gets to tell you about what we did with all this information that so many people were generous enough to give us. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. And um, if you want to wreak havoc on my slides, just, you know, <laughs> because I messed yours up. <laughs> all right, just you wait, thanks. <laughs> thank you. So thank you, Kristen. That was a great overview of the Circles project and how it was laid out. Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking with you all about the toolkit materials and kind of how we got to this point. So again, things that are important to the patient community are things that they have easy access to or things that kind of um, amplify the messages and the instructions that they're given in other places. And the PCG app, the Pocket Consultant Guide app, as Kristen mentioned, I mean, it is a fabulous tool. If you are not familiar with it, you can go on to um, the Apple Store or Google Play and you can actually look it up, download it, and just to see how much information is held there um, in this one location. But so what we wanted to do was to help people learn to use this app and see if it could be something that was beneficial. So based on the, the focus group, um, information that we received that that Kristen just gave such a great overview of, we felt, okay, we really need to to boil this down and distill this and make this something that is really usable. So just thinking about my own situation with my own smartphone and tablet, and I started thinking, okay, my goodness, I've probably got, you know, 50 or 60 apps on my phone, and I don't even use those apps in a, in a way that fully um, utilizes all the functionality of each app. So I am quite certain that the, there's no difference between the way I use apps and the way other people might use the PCG app. So we wanted to take a real big step back and start from the beginning. What is this app for? How do you utilize it? And how does it really make a difference in your day-to-day -day life? So we created this my COPD journey um, in kind of a fashion that looks a little bit like a game board because I think people are familiar with that it's comfortable there's nothing shocking about this it's a little easier to, to go through than like a decision tree or a flow chart and this is something that really because it's built in, in that circular fashion really lends itself to you might go through a concept 
and then revisit it later. So that's something that's really important to us as we um, as we talk about education, because I, you know, as, as a former teacher and a, and a respiratory therapist now, I recognize that people have to be um, immersed in something several times. They have to have a variety of ways that they hear the information and engage with the information before it really sticks. I'm that way, so I just I know that other people are that way too. So we wanted to make sure that we incorporated a few of the COPD Foundation tools. Um, Kristen mentioned the My COPD Action Plan, and we also had um, a document that was called the Report Exacerbations Worksheet. And so those were pieces that came along with this My COPD Journey game card. And so if you are able to see the screen here, you see up in the top left hand, there's a dark orange oval, and it's talking about goals. And it has a little call out box where people can actually write their own personal goals. What are your COPD goals? All of the things that we do to educate people and inform them and, and bring them to advocacy and all of those things are really um, built upon what their goals are. What do they hope to accomplish? This is very important. So we wanted to start this very project talking about patient goals. What are your goals? And to write them here, we even gave a little link for some help, a helpful video in case people were wondering, you know, what do you mean by goal setting? So we gave a little bit of instruction there. And each of these little side uh, trips out from the main My COPD journey, so you see going down to um, counterclockwise, the medication management, that is a button that is on the My COPD, uh, the um, PCG app, medication management, so they can go in with um, medications, uh, talk about um, immunization, test results, all of those things can be held right there on the PCG app. And here's the fabulous thing about the app. We do not have any capability to, to back engineer into retrieving information from an app that's on your device. So if you have information that you're storing on the app, on your phone or on your tablet, that is held on your device. We're not going to try to get back in there and see what it is you plugged in. That is for you. That's for you to keep track of all of your medications and all of your uh, medical interventions. And that's a safe place for you. So it also, um, under medication management, we had the inhaler videos and nebulizer videos. The nebulizer videos are how to use specific kinds of nebulizers and also how to clean them and store them in between use, which I think is pretty important. Then we come down to the yellow bubble where it's talking about exercise and activity. There's an activity tracker right there on the app. Questions, how can you be more active? How can activity help you reach your COPD goals? Uh, and these are really important things to consider um, as you're going throughout your day. Moving over then to the My COPD Action Plan, um, walks you through how to fill in the action plan. It keeps a calendar actually uh, right there on the app of your green days, your yellow days, your red days. So you don't have to think when you go back to the doctor, you don't have to try to remember, oh, I had three yellow days or I had, you know, a week full of yellow days. It's right there on the app for you. So you can pull it up, show the doctor or the, the healthcare professional, and they can see trends right there on the screen based on the input that you plug in to the PCG app. We also, again, sent out a paper copy a low-tech version of the My COPD Action Plan, because that's an important piece that we learned from our focus group, that the low-tech component is awfully valuable. And then there's a section on the app for asking questions or loading questions for your next doctor's appointment. And this is really important, because if you're like me, I can think ahead of time, oh, I've got to ask my doctor this, and I want to ask him about that. But when I get in there and things are a little bit hectic or maybe a little rushed, or maybe we're talking about something else that isn't exactly on that topic, I might forget. So if I can have a place to write the questions down and store them right there on my phone, then I can pull them up at, you know, right there at the visit and ask while I'm there. So again, this is built in that circular fashion so that people could just kind of revisit these things and keep these things top of mind. So some of the feedback that we got from the toolkit 
from um, the healthcare professionals that, that we worked with was that the toolkit was very helpful. It was really helpful to have the game board. It was really helpful to have these videos that went along with the game board that they could act that the uh, patients and the healthcare professionals could uh, access to refresh their memories on how to utilize each different component. So again, providing a variety of, of educational um, uh, impact for each of these components, whether it be written or spoken, we wanted to make sure that something was there for all kinds of learners. Um, the videos um, were also important because we wanted this tool to amplify the messages that the healthcare professionals are always trying to share. So whether that be through pulmonary rehab or through office visits or even through support groups, these videos were used to emphasize those important points. And they also said that the PCG app is a powerful tool that the patients can benefit from over time and um, that they were um, appreciative and the patients were receptive when the app was shared with them at their office visit. And then for those who were, are living with COPD, the, um, the follow-up focus group, the feedback that we got was that the project was beneficial. They said that the kit was helpful to them, the game board was fun, and it was an easy way to track progress. But having a hard copy, a hard printed out copy of that My COVD Action Plan was a good idea. And again, that kind of just lets us know that we were on the right track from our, our first focus group. And then some of the patient perceptions of the PCG app itself, um, that it might have been a little bit challenging for some to navigate but most people were able to use it. Um, some people would have liked a little bit more instruction on how to use the app. Um, and the most liked features were the activity tracking and the ability to monitor and record daily symptoms. Um, we even had some feedback that some participants would really have loved to see a more customizable menu. Um, and then one of the challenges, we just want to be really um, upfront about one of the challenges that we encountered was that um, in that community people either didn't have smartphones or tablets to access the app or they just didn't use apps in general but for the people that you know fit the fit the criteria that fit the bill um, for using smartphones and for using apps this is the feedback that we got from them overall positive so what were some of the lessons learned? Well, we learned that indeed challenges remain for those who live in rural America, just because of the access to care that Kristen mentioned earlier, some of the other disparities that can occur just from having the distance between them and, and urban centers. Um, we also learned that COVID-19 has created some significant challenges itself um, to this project being implemented. So while telehealth has become more prevalent, um, telehealth sometimes without video components can make it a challenge um, for the patient and provider recruitment for this. Um, we also learned that with primary health care professionals, they're already pressed for time and they found it a little bit challenging to devote time to this project. And overall, there's a, there's a gap in how impacted individuals and healthcare professionals perceive their ability to use technology, which Kristen alluded to earlier. So we would like to thank NHLBI and Westat for their support of this project and their team. Uh, we would also like to thank the following, Rural Medical Education Collaborative, which is a division of Talon Health, and our healthcare center partners in New Mexico and Colorado, as well as the Circles Advisory Board. And we thank you all very much for your time. If you have any questions um, following this presentation today, you can send them to info at copdfoundation.org and we will return those uh, messages as soon as we can. We appreciate so much your being here with us today. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>